Blue Magpie Games came to Essen Spiel last year with a game called Majolica. It was received well, so this year they returned, as you do, with a new version of it, called Majolica Painting. Is it any good? Let's find out, but first, how the hell you play. In Majolica Painting, each player gets a Majolica sheet. There's a deck of 20 cards, and each card shows you both a requirement to score points and a sequence of colors. I will explain the requirements on the top of the cards later on, but first, let us start painting. You will paint this sequence of colors anywhere on the board. You can start wherever you want, but you must make exactly one turn. Each square on the board can be painted twice, once on the inside and once on the outside, giving you more options to connect groupings of the same color tiles next to each other. Each sheet comes with a couple of wing tiles. These can only be painted once, but as a bonus you may immediately paint any tile on your sheet in the color you just used to paint that wing tile. You are allowed to skip a tile when you're painting, you will jump over that tile you were supposed to draw on and also skip that color in the sequence. You can do that up to six times and every time you do, you fill out the trowel symbol. At the end of the game, you gain points equal to the amount of unused trowel symbols. You can also choose to pass and not paint the sequence. Once you have some colors on your sheet, you might be able to meet some of the scoring requirements. These requirements show you an amount of tiles to already be painted and orthogonally connected on your sheet. Either all of one color or connected tiles that are double painted. And if that is the case, you win a prize! Your prize is either coloring in the next free spot on your flower bingo, or if you win a wheelbarrow, you get to choose how you want to score points. At the end of the game, you will check each color and write down the largest group of tiles that are orthogonally adjacent in that color. With the wheelbarrow prizes, you will be able to score points for those colors. If you use your wheelbarrow prize to cross off these two symbols, at the end of the game, you'll gain one point for the amount of tiles in your best color. But you need two wheelbarrow prizes to score that once. Easier might be to choose one wheelbarrow prize here and gain one point for the second best color you've scored at the end of the game. Or go here and gain two times the amount of points for the color with the least connected group of tiles. And here you can use your wheelbarrow prize to get points for the amount of wing tiles you've used during the game. Once the card deck is empty, the game is over and you add the points for each scoring category and see who is the winner of Majolica Painting. I like the idea of the game, but there are too many little things that keep me from loving it. Let me shed some light on my findings. And the first thing is the rules. They are a puzzle to figure out. And when someone asks a question on Board Game Geek, the answers are even more confusing to me. I understand it is hard, to make a game in uh, Taiwanese and then have it translated into English and then have them interpreted by someone who speaks even another language altogether. Things that might be clear in one translation still can make some confusion happen in the other one. Supposedly there will be a better version of the rules on the game's Board Game Geek page, but until now that has not been the case. So you'll have to do with the rules that are in the box and maybe some extra rules that you'll find on Board Game Geek. I actually finished my review of this game, but I felt I had to redo it because my new interpretations of the rules inclined me to another play and another video. I don't like the way the game looks, <laughs> the sheet looks. If you want this game to look nice, you'll have to put in the effort yourself. The game says you're working with the colors red, blue, orange and green, but the cards show pink and yellow. And the game tells you, well, if you want, you can use your own colors. Just fill in the color that is printed on the sheet with the color you'd like to substitute that for. Which makes it unnecessary hard. You can pass on certain cards if you don't like the sequence. And you can also skip colors to mediate even more. To me, this feels like too much mediation. I feel this game would actually appeal more to me if it would come with dice making it harder to predict what comes up and more enticing to skip colors if you so wish. 
The iconography is hard for me to understand, to get into the theme. There's a wheelbarrow, there's a, a trowel, I think the word is, a flower bingo. That's just too much. It's too small and there could have been a theme here. There could have been uh, an idea of a theme here. What I really like about the game is revisiting the same spaces to draw on them. I saw that before in Twice as Clever from Wolfgang Warsh, where you first cross off something to get a bonus and the second time to gain points. There is definitely a future for that mechanism in games like this, uh, in Roll and Rides altogether. How about painting an array of flowers with more than two components? Getting points for the colors used and bonus points if you make the, the colors of the rainbow. I think I have an idea for tussy mussy painting. Let me send some emails. So that's it for me on Majolica painting. One quick last note, the very friendly representative of Taiwan board game design gifted me these paper wrapped pencils to go with the game. I'd never seen them before and I really like them. So thank you Smooks. For more board gaming nonsense, check out our podcast, This Game is Broken, a board gaming panel show where a bunch of idiots are getting a bunch of idiotic things to do. My name is Dave Luza. Thanks for watching. Bye.